Thanks for checking out this Shutter update video. So this is what's coming to Shutter in February, and I got to tell you up front, it sounds like some really good stuff. It is jam packed, so I'm gonna try and get through this as fast as possible because there's a lot in there, and some of the stuff I might not read the descriptions for if they're kind of known films. So first off, the big thing that people are thinking about: when is the Joe Bob, the new season of uh, Joe Bob's Last Drive-In, happening? It will not be in February because nothing's been said about it, unless they're gonna do an announcement later. But they usually just will say it's like TBA type thing and there's none of that for February. I'm assuming it'll be the same as when it was released last year, which I believe was April. It was either end of March or in April. So I'm I'm thinking around there. So anyway, first of all, uh, they're going to be putting more episodes out for their show, The Deadlands. Um, that was already covered in the January one. So if you want to know about that, go back to my January update video. Uh, also, the film Bliss coming out Thursday, the 30th of January. Same for Dead uh, Deadlands is going through March 5th for all its episodes. Um, another special for Shudder, a Shudder original, Dogs Don't Wear Pants, and that premieres on February 6th. Uh, this is a Best Picture winner at Fantastic Fest and Sitkiss International Film Festival, so that's exciting. Uh, Juha develops an unexpected but powerful connection with Dominatrix named Mona following a tragic event in his life that has left him emotionally paralyzed. Uncovering his dangerous addiction to suffocation, Mona leads them both down a wild, violent path towards emotional enlightenment. That sounds kind of nuts. Sounds interesting. I am interested in that one. And I will be doing screeners for a bunch of these. Um, I'm doing screeners for... Yes, dogs don't wear pants. So that means when I'm doing my screeners, that means I'll release a no spoilers review on the day that it hits Shutter. So it's available immediately. So if you want to know, should I watch this? Since it's available on Shutter, you can check my channel and always get those screener information or get my information on what I think of the screeners. All right. So then there's three from hell. I know a lot of people want to see this film, me included. Uh, that'll be hitting on February 13th. After barely surviving a furious shootout with the police, Baby Firefly, Otis Driftwood, and Captain Spaulding are behind bars, but pure evil cannot be contained. Te teaming up with Otis's half-brother Wilson, the demented Firefly clan are back to unleash a whole new wave of death and depravity in this long-awaited sequel to Zombies Cult Hits, House of Thousand Corpses, and The Devil's Rejects. Shutter exclusive. So yes, once again, that's a screener as well. I will be having a review of it, no spoilers, the day it hits. Cool, interested. And then I will also have a screener for this next one called Jessica Forever. That is coming out the 20th. In a visually arresting and inventive dystopian future where violent misfits reign supreme, one woman and her makeshift family of rehabilitated marauders fight for peace. Okay, and that's a Shudder original. So, yeah. So, uh, in my last video, I was saying that, like, also available in UK, also available... Uh, in Canada, that type of stuff. But I'm not going to do that anymore because people have kind of reminded me that um, if they use, I think, their VPN, then it's not going to matter. So, whatever. All right. So, uh, coming, this, these are the, like, non-Shutter original things. Although there is a Shutter original podcast that's going to be coming out called Horror Noir Uncut, which... I'm not going to read through the whole synopsis of it, but basically, if people are familiar, uh, Eli Ross' History of Horror that was on AMC, after they ran that show, they then released uncut all of the interviews that they did as podcast episodes. So they are doing that for the Horror Noir documentary. If you haven't seen the Horror Noir documentary, it is still on Shutter. It's very, very good. It's about um, African-American horror history in, in film and it's very good. It's extremely well made. I loved it. I, sh I should go rewatch it and do a review, like a full review on it. But I will be checking out this podcast because I did the same for the Eli Ross History of Horror. It's just really cool to hear that stuff. So Horror Noir Uncut. Look for that podcast starting February 7th, which is a Friday. Uh, now the featured collection. Here they go. Love Sick. This film will be available on the 1st. There's a thin line between love and terror, cross it on Valentine's Day or any day, with this lovingly curated selection of movies and series that delight in the darker side of desire. 
So basically, this is a collection of films they're kind of putting out and together on Shutter that kind of has a, you know, Valentine's feel. And a lot of these films, I'm like, yeah. So Dogs Don't Wear Pants, Lizzie, Beast, My Bloody Valentine, Audition, The Love Witch, Spring, Ganja and Hess, Double Lover, November, Are We Not Cats, Honeymoon, Little Deaths, Kiss of the Damned, Return of the Living Dead 3, Night of the Living Debs, uh, A Discovery of Witches, Prom Night, and Mary Lou Prom Night 2. So that is one collection that will be there kind of grouped together. And some of those you've heard and are like, wait, does that mean that's coming in February? Yes, and I'll get to that. So coming February 1st is Child's Play by Tom Holland. Uh, we all know what Child's Play is. I'm not, I'm not going to read the description of Child's Play. Everyone knows Child's Play. It's a classic. So excited to see that on there. Chris Sarandon, yeah. Uh, Escape from New York. We all know Escape from New York as well. This isn't really horror, but it's done by John Carpenter. It's a hell of a lot of fun. I love Escape from New York. It's been a while since I've watched it, though. So I'm going to watch it on Shudder when that drops. That is also available on the first I'm excited for that one. Escape from New York. Yeah, buddy. Also by John Carpenter, The Fog. This is another great one. This is another one I haven't seen in quite some time. And I really, really, really love this movie. Adrian Barbeau is wonderful in it. And she's a wonderful human being. I've been, I've had the pleasure of meeting her in person. She's very nice, very awesome. So I'm going to rewatch The Fog. Excited about that one. Also going to rewatch this one, which I did a review for on the channel back in October. My Bloody Valentine, and that was my first time seeing it, and since then, I've been like, I want to watch it again, so I will be watching it again, maybe even on the first, we'll see. Um, I'll read My Bloody Valentine, because not necessarily everyone knows My Bloody Valentine. Wearing a miner's mask and armed with a pickaxe, an unstoppable killer is on the loose. Ten years ago in the town of Harmony, an inexperienced coal miner caused an accident that trapped and killed five men and sent the only... Survivor Harry Warden into a permanent coma, but Harry Warden wanted revenge. Exactly one year later on Valentine's Day, he woke up and brutally murdered 22 people with a pickaxe before being killed. Now after years of peace, something from Harmony's dark past is back. This movie's great. If you haven't seen it, definitely see it. I did a spoiler-laden review of it. Go check that out after you watch it. Worth it. Then we have Night of the Comet. This is another one that I'm pretty sure I've seen some time ago, but it's been a while. Do want to rewatch it? Uh, a huge comet passes near the Earth, vaporizing nearly the whole planet. Only a few teenagers inside a steel movie projection booth survive as all those outside are turned to dust. But a few partially exposed people are now hideous, bloodthirsty zombies, and they begin a deadly hunt for the last remaining humans. Sounds like fun. I'm pretty sure I've seen this before, but I don't remember a whole lot from it, so it obviously needs a rewatch for me. Now, films coming February 3rd. Like Me, a masked YouTuber draws fame followers and a few vocal haters from her increasingly dangerous videos. This trippy, wonderfully twisted South by Southwest selection features an alienated Addison Timlin and a morally dubious Larry Fessenden as unlikely companions on a drug-fueled neon road trip that goes where you least expect it. That sounds fun. I would like to try that one out. The Whistler. This is actually a short film. Uh, Lindsay is put in charge of babysitting her younger sister Becky one night while their parents go out to dinner. Becky asks for a bedtime story and picks out a book called The Whistler, the story of a man who leads children to a magical place in the woods where they never have to grow up. Peter Pan much? Lindsay tells Becky that the real story is about a crazy man who lived in the town some hundreds hundreds of years ago who led children to their death. Unimpressed, Beth, Becky goes to bed, but when Lindsay awakes, her sister is gone and she must search the woods to find her. Sounds fun. Then we have on February 6th, uh, Dogs Don't Wear Pants. We already went over that one. And I will be, like I said, I'll be doing the screener for that. Then we have The Golden Glove. Based on the best-selling novel of the same name, acclaimed filmmaker Faith, uh, Fatih Aken, or Aiken delivers the gruesome tale of notorious German serial killer Fritz Honka as he haunts Hamburg's red-light district in the 1970s. Frequenting his favorite bar of boozy castaways, the Golden Glove, and chasing after any lonely woman he might just be able to 
lure into his attic. Uh, sounds interesting. I might check that one out. The Hills Have Eyes. Yes, the original The Hills Have Eyes by Wes Craven. Don't need to go into that one. Well-known film. I like it quite a bit. Joe Bob did that film for his Dinners of Death. Not this past, not in 2019, but in 2018. And it was awesome. Which, I don't know if they still have that episode up on Shudder. Check for that. Because that's a better way to look. I mean, The Hills Have Eyes is great. The Joe Bob treatment to it is even better to watch, though. Then we have Prom Night. Uh... I know a lot of people probably know it, but I'll read the description in case people don't. For six long years, Hamilton High School seniors Kelly, Jude, Wendy, and Nick have been hiding the truth of what happened to 10-year-old Robin Hammond the day her broken body was discovered near an old abandoned convent. They kept secret how they taunted Robin, backed her into a corner until, frightened, she stood on a window ledge and fell to her death. Fearing they'd be held responsible, they vowed never to tell. However, someone else was there that day and now is ready to exact their revenge on prom night. I have seen this film again. Uh, this one's been years, and maybe I need to rewatch that one too. Then we have Hello, Mary Lou, Prom Night 2, which had gotten the Joe Bob treatment as well. If that's still on Shutter, check it out that way. Uh, in this supernatural sequel to the slasher classic Prom Night, Sexually voracious bad girl Mary Lou Maloney is burned alive after winning prom queen in 1957. 30 years later, her spirit returns to possess Vicky, a cheerleader who's been chafing under her parents' repressive rules. Mom and dad soon get an eyeful after Vicky starts acting out, but Mary Lou is more focused on revenge on the man who caused her early exit from Earth, who's now the school principal. It's a fun film. It's a lot of fun. But like I said, if they still have the Joe Bob version on Shudder, watch it that way. Worth it. Uh, then f February 13th, Three from Hell. I already talked about that one. February 17th, one called Blank Blankety. It's a short. A woman attempts to exploit the human experience to use as a data set for a program that will generate an infinite number of scenarios through machine learning. Unfortunately, as the computer continues to fail, the people contributing to the data set start running out of ideas. Sounds interesting. I'm totally good with watching short films. I mean, short films are still films. Plus, it doesn't take long, so more digestible. Soul Station. I've heard good things about this one. In this chilling animated prequel to the Korean horror smash Train to Busan, which is good, a zombie outbreak spreads amongst homeless people in the area surrounding Seoul Station. At the same exact moment the chaos begins, begins, a worried father arrives in the district hoping to track down his runaway daughter. But the odds are not in their favor, because as any fan of zombie cinema knows, the real bad guys are never the undead, but selfish monsters of the flesh and blood variety. Yep, and it says that it borrows heavily from George A. Romero, so that's good. Return of the Living Dead 3. The government is still experimenting with the reanimating chemical trioxin. When a young man loses his girlfriend in an auto accident, he uses the research to bring her back and helps at, and helps as she consumes the only thing that will nourish her. Human brains, of course. I have actually not seen Return of the Living Dead 3. I've actually only seen the first Return of the Living Dead. So I guess I have to watch the second one and then watch the third one when it's on Shudder. Uh, February 20th, as we talked, Jessica Forever doing a screener for that one then february 24th we have dog soldiers which is hailed by a lot of people as being one of the best werewolf films out there neil marshall did it a group of soldiers dispatched to the scottish highlands on special training maneuvers face their biggest fears after they run into captain ryan the only survivor of a special ops team that was literally torn to pieces I wonder what did that Ryan refuses to disclose his mission, even though whoever attacked his men might be hungry for seconds. Help arrives in the form of a local girl who shelters them in a deserted farmhouse deep in the forest, but when they realize that they are surrounded by a pack of blood-lusting werewolves, it's apparent their nightmare has just begun. It is a good film, and I feel like werewolves are underutilized, so when you can find a good werewolf film that you haven't seen, watch it. Definitely watch Dog Soldiers. Then we have Empathy, Inc., an investor in a VR startup, startup discovers that the reality the company provides isn't virtual. That's it. That's the whole description. I mean, short, so intriguing. I might check it out. We'll see. And the last one is Wendigo. This one is directed by Larry Fessenden, so you know it'll probably be pretty good, at least. 
A blue Volvo makes its way through the fading light of a chilly winter evening in upstate New York. Kim, George, and their eight-year-old son, Miles, are city dwellers stealing a weekend away at a friend's country farmhouse. But a fluke accident sets off a chain of events that alters their lives forever and conjures up a ferocious spirit of the Wendigo, a Native American myth made manifest in Miles' imagination. Sounds interesting. I'm down to do that. People who are into like cryptozoology, cryptids, all that, probably know about the Wendigo. So that's interesting. Anyway, all right. Uh, I'm excited about a bunch of those, uh, especially the ones that I said I need to rewatch, like The Fog and My Bloody Valentine and stuff like that. Um, heard mixed things about Three from Hell, but I'm very interested to check it out. So put some comments down here. What are you excited about for February for Shudder? Um, yeah, I'd love to hear what you're excited about. Also, what have you been watching recently? What can you recommend to me film-wise? And I will take some recommendations potentially for reviews uh, that I can do. So please put that down there. Anyway, please pay me back if you like any of my videos by hitting that subscribe. That's a great way to keep me motivated. If you already subscribe, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you want to, if you aren't subscribing, you hit subscribe and like and you'd be super awesome. But thanks anyone. Eh, thanks anyone. Thanks everyone. Well, I mean, thanks anyone, but thanks everyone who's watching this for checking it out. And until next time, keep it brutal.